What's up, people? It's Thursday, and uh, I got a music update, which I'll do in a second. But I'm going to start with what's on my mind. Uh, I got the radio on. They're talking about Cleveland. They always talk about things uh, as though this is the first time or this is some sort of anomaly. You know, what happened in Cleveland is our fault, you know, as a society that is, okay. Music, music, that's what you want to hear about, isn't it, isn't it? I always just want to just point out or just say, you know, that we're just phony. You know, we say one thing, but we don't mean it. What happened, what's happening in Cleveland is happening right now in Omaha. There's people right now in Omaha, probably being held against their will. As a mental health worker, I helped with many situations where this was the case. And several of them um, didn't make the news. Some of them did. Please bear with me. Uh, several years ago, it did make the news when we uncovered a situation where a young, retarded, I know that's not the nice word, but a developmentally disabled woman had been being held captive um, by these young men, these the, this part of a part of a gang, and what they had been doing was they were raping her, then they were keeping her against her will in a basement, uh, guarded by a mountain lion. This is really true. It made the news, and the other thing they had her doing was they had her going out robbing banks, and it worked for a while. And she finally got caught because she didn't follow instructions or something. That's right here in Omaha. Um, I guarantee you, there's people being held against their will, just like they're talking about Cleveland right now. And there's signs that people are ignoring or don't. Now, in hindsight, like the news that keeps saying, everything is wonderful in hindsight. Interesting. I wonder if anyone will use that hindsight now to maybe take a second look at something that they have not really paid attention to that's going on right now. White slavery is epidemic. Um, child sexual abuse and child sex slavery is uh, epidemic. It's just not um, being talked about in a way that we can really address it, in my opinion. It's, but as a social service, as a social worker and mental health specialist for over 30 years, I can tell you from direct experience, it's a it's 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 uh, something else. Okay, guess what? I'm not gonna start over again. These things that I say, you know, they're important. Okay, so if you made it through it, good for you. The bonus is you get to hear about some records I bought yesterday. I got that feeling. I don't always respond to it because sometimes I get the feeling and I don't have any money. But I got that feeling yesterday. Go dig. And then I stopped myself, where though? So I went to this consignment store where the records are generally really in badly shape, in bad shape, and overpriced. Excuse me, but I was determined. I said, I'm going to find something. I feel it. And I found a couple things I want to share with you. I'll do a needle drop, too, on this. Chico Hamilton, Peregrinations. Now, this is the kind of album that, in the past, I would have... Um, pass this up, but I've learned through the vinyl community to uh, listen with new ears to Chico Hamilton because I have some Chico Hamilton. And in the past, I always thought Chico Hamilton was kind of kind of bogus, you know, kind of jive style. And some of his music is too jive for me. Some of the music that uh, people are really, really into um that they call jazz and funk is still too jive for me. This is this is good. This is good though. Peregrinations. Arthur, Arthur Blythe on sax on here does a nice job. Now John Coltrane sixty eight pointed out a track on here to me yesterday called Andy's Walk. And it's good, but you know, our our actual taste is a little different because that is not the standout track to my ears, Andy's Walk isn't. 
I like saying that. I like uh, defining me for no other reason just to do it because I want to. It doesn't matter, you know. I say this and I'll say it again. You know, I'm just going to die, so let me enjoy. Let me enjoy this moment right now. You're going to do the same. You're just going to die, so enjoy. Enjoy the moment. Arthur Blythe on sex. This is very nice. And there was a time I probably would not have bought it. So I got that. I got four records. I spent 22 bucks. That's great. And four records. I got just a minute now. Okay, here we go. So I got some good records. Just a couple of neat records, all right. Keith Jarrett, Mysteries. Now, Keith Jarrett has made a ton of albums. This is good. Now, um, I don't really care about what critics say. Uh, all I care about is what I hear. This is an exceptional date. There is some um, excellent Paul Motion, Modian drumming on here. Excellent Paul Modian drumming. I noticed that I listened to all of side one yesterday while I laid down. And what I noticed about Paul Modian's drumming was the way that he defined the heads, the melodic uh, foundations of these songs in, a, in ways that on the surface, if you're not listening closely, it doesn't sound like he's even with the band. He's playing through the changes so freely. This is really good. This was a real nice find yesterday for four bucks. Keith Jarrett Mysteries. This was my fine find. Um, paid nine dollars for this. I was looking at it and I thought, yeah, this is something. The Racket Squad, Corners of Your Mind on Jubilee. Back from the psychedelic days that it's that classic you know look at the white boys looking cool type of thing you know what I'm saying this is really good on the original on the Jubilee label it's in damn near perfect condition I looked this up yesterday online and copies of this in the shape of mine are going regularly for around 56 bucks and this is good this is actually, this is good. Rock and Soul. Now the last thing I found, um, I will tie it in with some of the records that in my collection, because I haven't done that in a while. This was only three bucks, and it's the original motion picture soundtrack to The Last Summer. Music composed and performed by John Simon. Now what caught my attention was two things, the cover, you know, okay, that time period, you know, the end of the 60s. But when I went looked at the back, Colin Walcott's name caught my attention. Colin Walcott, the sitar player from Oregon, who's passed away. There's a six minute raga on here by Colin Walcott. It's very good. Now, Seeing his name on this yesterday was what caught my attention. I said, okay, I, I think I found something. And um, then when I'm looking it up last night, this was made in 1969. I thought, hmm, is this the earliest Colin Walcott record I have? Because I have a bunch of records by, with Colin Walcott on them. He was in the band Oregon. Oregon's made about 25 albums. I have about 13 of them. I didn't pull them out. I've got them right over there. Beautiful music. Again, Oregon music is just healthy and beautiful interesting I find those records um, in the used and the cheap bins all the time it's like I don't know anyway I was thinking to myself um, <clears throat> Colin Walcott excellent musician passed away too young but here he is on this early soundtrack I wonder if this is his first um, commercial recording so I looked it up and it turns out it isn't. And it turns out he's done quite a bit of work. 
and I have some interesting early albums that he's played on that um, I had either didn't realize or overlooked. He is uncredited on this album, Chameleon Church. This came out in 1968 when there was this big Bean Town Boston uh, Boston sound hype going on in the in the record industry. The comedian Chevy Chase is the drummer. There he is. I'm looking all cool. But Colin Walcott also plays sitar uncredited on one track on this, I found out. He also plays uh, sitar on this Elise Weinberg album, which is becoming kind of a collector's item as time goes on. This was made in 1968. And um, singer, folk singer, songwriter, this is just okay. But I'm glad I held on to it. And chances are, if I listen to it again, I might have a different experience, and that's what I'll, I'll do. Colin Walcott is on this, Buddy Rich and uh, Ala Raka. Uh, Colin Walcott studied with Ala Raka and Rabbi Shankar. So he's on here. Colin Walcott's also on this album, Vassant Rai, Autumn Songs. Kind of similar to Oregon, this album is. Quite a few... Um, Folks from most of Oregon is on this album. This is really nice though. Vassant Rai, Autumn Song. Here's his album, Grazing Dreams. I used to have Cloud Dance, I don't have it anymore, and I don't have Cadonas on vinyl to show you. But he did the Cadona series with Don Cherry. I first heard of him with Paul Winter, Winter Consort, Icarus. This is again, beautiful album. He's also on this Meredith Monk album, which um, I haven't listened to in a while. Dolman Music. Need to give this a, a listen. Colin Walcott's done quite a bit of work over the years. He's also on this Egberto Gismonti Sol do Meio Dia album. This album is incredible. Fantastic on ECM. Another ECM album he's on, Drum Mode by Dave Liebman. Another fantastic album. Come on, people, you want to hear some good music. This is killer. Two more. Colin Walcott also plays on this David Amram Subway Night album. This is a, a mixture of Americana roots music and uh, social commentary. David Amram. And very prominently, Colin Walcott is on On the Corner, Miles Davis. That droning tambura sitar sound, that's Colin Walcott. So I was real pleased to find that Colin Walcott, that soundtrack that he's on, the Chico Freeman, and uh, the other. Some other quick news, because I'm gonna go to the studio after this and leave it. It'll take this, this a 15 minute video is gonna take two plus hours to upload. I need a new computer or something, I don't know. I had the meeting with the, uh, the film company. I just had the card so I could tell you their name. 49-something is the name of this small company that is making this film called Flyover Country, which is basically about coming out in the Midwest. I mean, it's about more than that, but it is. It's a message movie, which I'm always interested in. Um, when they asked for my services, I already had the job, but not in my mind. In my mind, I had to see if I have if I really have something that they, they think they can use. So I met with the, the group last night, took them a um, disc full of half a half hour of music that most of it I had just composed in the last few days for them. And they, they, they were head over heels over all of it. Oh, thank God. And I I know I had, you know, prepared something decent for them, but it's a long story about how discourage and disappointment and abuse leave deep scars and you always have to work through them you know to get to the to the bright side that's my experience and so those disappointments and discouragements that have been heaped upon me always come to the surface um first when new things come up you know insecurities and stuff they loved everything matter of fact um looks like i already have written the theme for the movie um and then um 
I played a couple of pieces off of Sonospheres 2 where I thought it would fit. We're gonna, I'm going to use Sonospheres 2 as part of the soundtrack. So they, they officially um, declared me as the uh, sound production manager, composer, uh, in charge of uh, sound and music for this project. They already want to talk about the next film, which we did, but you know, one thing at a time, but I like that. And I was also very pleased that, you know, they've been, you know, even though it's not a lot of money they're paying me, but they, they specifically wanted me and really felt good about what they said they felt I can bring to the project. That's, that's nice. So part of Sonospheres 2 will be featured in the soundtrack at this point. I played a couple pieces where I thought for pad music on certain scenes. A couple of my pieces I on Sonospheres 2 work, and they said, yeah, this really works. So so that's happening. Um be working on that. My deadline is July. I'm real happy about that. Um this Chico Hamilton's really good, isn't it? Um, I won't say I'll get behind on watching videos. There's just a lot of videos I'm, not, I'm just not going to see because of my time. But I want to say again that the, the idea of the vinyl community is precious to me. And the fact that people are doing vinyl community is important. Keep it rocking, people. I love how Eric Roberts, I believe is his name, he just saw Opeth and uh, met Michael Ackerfeld and told Michael Ackerfeld about the BC. Of course, Michael is too busy to watch <laughs> YouTube. But I think that's awesome that what our identity, and I will say ours, as a divine community, is important enough that people are talking about this to major artists. Spread the word, I think that's cool. I think that's real cool. Last thing I'll say is, again, I want to just point out how I'm just fully human, fully flawed. I'll say something I may contradict myself, but we all do, you know. Think about it, folks. You don't know anybody that's so cool that they don't have any flaws. There is no one on this planet like that. No one. And, um... I uh, am highly suspicious of people who are always minimizing their faults, always trying to puff up like a, like a peacock or something. Very suspicious of people like that. 